I am so freaking excited for today's video because summer solstice, very important, powerful time, a time of transformation, a time that allows you to shine light on where is it that you're being full of shit in your life, okay? Where is it that you're wearing those masks? Where is it that you are too scared to step out of the little box that your inner critic put you in? This is the time. So today I'm sharing with you four practices, four ways to make the most of this powerful period because we have special energetics going on right now that you want to make the most of. So without further ado, let's dive right in. This is literally my favorite time of the year. I have two Christmases. So one is around the actual Christmas. That is the winter solstice, December 21st, and the summer solstice that is June 21st because our ancestors celebrated the sun. They celebrated the sun god. This is what Christianity then put, you know, the birth of Jesus in December because those uh, ancient cultures would celebrate the rebirth of the sun god during the winter solstice because the days would get shorter and then the sun god would be reborn and the get days would start getting longer again so so much around the sun cultivating the energy of the sun right the the energies of the sun of the moon these are all really really important and right now this time brings a special power a special message with it and a special invitation so before i dive into the four practices what i want to share with you is that this is the time to see where is it your that your soul is just looking to expand to reach its full potential and where is it that you're holding that energy back all right so the first practice which may seem unimportant and it's actually super important i want to say it's one of is the most important it's not but what i'm saying is the, all four are not to be skipped. All four are important and all four are here to contribute to your transformation. So the first one, although is more feminine, not masculine, right? Because masculine energy is direction, purpose, creation, doing. The feminine is being, it's receiving, is inspiring, it's flow, it's intuition. That is, those are the gifts of the feminine. And notice, notice how most of the great inventions, the great ideas, maybe you notice this in your own life, that those aha moments, they don't come when you're trying to think your way out of it or through it. Ideas come in the shower. Ideas come when you're in the state of just surrender and flow and presence. That is the feminine. Those are the gifts of the feminine. Actually, the presence and like being ground is more it's masculine it's creating that space the masculine creates a safe container for the feminine to flourish to be expressed for intuition motivation ideas to be received right so the first one the first practice for the summer solstice to make the most of this month of these energies is to express yourself creatively this looks different for different people. This looks different for those of the feminine energy and of the masculine energy. This does not mean men and women. Careful with this one. It's just which energy are you mainly leading from? So for women, it may look like maybe painting or, um, I don't know, re like moving furniture around. I'm just looking at my room. And um, something that is just creative in the sense of, ooh, colorful expressive right allowing yourself to go into that especially if it's something that was so foreign to you for such a long time um for men it may be a little bit different maybe connecting to the body more it may look like a different workout routine it may look like cooking more mindfully it may look like, because um, it's also connecting to the feminine energies, that Mother Earth, to those resources. It may look like maybe woodwork, creating something, carving something, maybe um, different ways, building something. Like that too is creative expression for a lot of my male clients. Maybe it's, you know, things that you used to love to do as a child, but you haven't gotten around to doing. This is really, really important. The, in, when you do these things, when you're opening up to that receptivity, you're opening up to God, life, source, consciousness to move through you, to inspire you, to create, and therefore also to create, you know, income in your life, to bring those relationships, those connections in your life, and therefore that freedom. So really, really important step. Do not skip this one. Number two. 
The power of the summer solstice is shining light on where we are holding back. It's shining light on where is it that we're too afraid. It's, you know, if in the winter solstice, we're coming into this new beginning, the rebirth of the sun. What do you want to put in place? Here we're celebrating more of the fullness of the sun. So the question with this one is full potential. If you knew that you couldn't fail, what would you do? If you knew that you could not fail, what would you try? What would you do? And there was a whole video on failure and how do we move past failure and what does that really mean? And also the fact that most people aren't afraid of failure or afraid of success. But if you are afraid of failure, what do we do with that? So that video is going to be somewhere around here. Um, asking those questions. This is the time to ask that. The fullness of your expression. Where is it that you're running away from it? Where is it that you're hiding from it? Right now is an invitation to look at that fear in the eyes. And hey, maybe you're not ready to take that action step yet. That's okay. Just naming it for now. All right. Number three. Health is vitality. Health. Health is vitality. Sun is vitality. Sun is health. Sun is crops. Sun is nutrition. So connection to the body. And I'm kind of jumping from masculine feminine energies, right? The first step was feminine energy. The second is more masculine energy, decisiveness. What am I not doing? How can I create? If I knew I couldn't fail, what would I do? Doing. This is the masculine energy. I'm going back to the feminine. Grounding into right now. Grounding into the body. Literally all the clients that I work with. The reason those subconscious blocks are there, the reason that distrust in life is there, the reason they're achieving those things on the outside and feeling such a lack, such lack of confidence, such lack of, gosh, is this all there is, lack of fulfillment, is because there's stagnant energy in the body that we're afraid to connect to, is because we're not here in the present moment, and I kind of jumped ahead a little bit there, we're not present, and the reason we don't want to be present is because there's trapped energy that we're terrified of feeling. We don't want to feel that. So we reject the present moment. And this is the crazy thing. It seems easier to suffer and to replay moments of the past or to go into fears or hopes for the future, which are both aren't real, by the way. It, that feels easier than coming into the body because this feels so terrifying. This feels so agonizing. This starts with just consciously making the first step. Nutrition, exercise, sunlight. If you go to a supermarket, it's terrifying. My guidance literally just recently I was in the store and they're like, poison, poison, poison. Like, don't have any of this. Choosing things that serve you. You are what you consume. Whether it is food, whether it's, you know, social media, news, music your environment, you are what you consume. Choose wisely that which you are consuming. That's number three. Number four, back to the masculine. Through this connection to self, and there's a reason why they go in this order, all right? We went to the feminine, the creativity. We went to owning up. Where is it that we're playing small? And what would it actually look like if we knew that divinity within us like wow if I can't fail what would I do what do I really want to do what lights me up where is it that I'm not holding uh where is it that I'm holding myself back from that where is it that I'm not living up to that we went into okay now we're strengthening our core first of all right the physical body and this impacts by the way the mental spiritual emotional levels as well and number four Clarity of targets. Now, this is something that I love doing. First of all, this is what we do in the membership. We have a quarterly planning coming up just because it's a new quarter and setting those targets for the quarter and moving forward with them. But what I love to do in my personal practice especially is setting a clear intention, like a North Star, that quality that you know you're going to be following for the next six months. So I do this during the winter solstice. I do this during the summer solstice. What is the word? What is the intention? 
And you're welcome to do that. And you're also welcome to set clear targets. We've got six months left of the year. What are you doing with these six months? What do you want to create? What do you want your life to look like? This is the time to do it. Because again, it's that fullness of the sun. It's similarly as during the lunar cycle. We set intentions during the new moon and we reassess during the full moon. The sun, the sun cycle, same thing. We may set those targets in the winter and we may set them in the summer. Or if you're doing it once a year, then the other time period is to reassess. And keeping that question in mind, right, from number two, if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? What would your target look like from that place? Now, there's an important point, and this is something that we go deeper in the quarterly planning, in the powerful self, embodiment, and integration. The link is that's below, by the way. Such an important point is that the target is not the end result. So when we're saying that I want to be this weight, that shouldn't be the target. The target is more of the action steps. Like I've done everything that I could in order to make this happen. Now with the body, it's a little bit easier because I mean, you know, you count your calories, your exercise, it's kind of straightforward. If you put in the work, you will get those results. Let's take relationship, for example, because that one, that one's tricky, right? Because there's a bit more of universe's help here. I want that kind of relationship. I want, I want to be married. Let's say why I want, you know, this kind of partner. That's the end results is cherry on top. The target cannot be the end result, especially that it doesn't depend on you. Your target is, for example, I want to become the best partner I can be. I want to take maybe a relationship course or read a book about um, relationships and how to have a conscious relationship, if that's what you're into, or how to build something with another person. So those are the targets. Like I fulfill that. Because what a lot of times happens is that we're so hungry after that destination that we forget that the whole point is the journey and we don't feel that fulfillment in the journey because we are so seeing the results like, oh, well, I'm not getting the results, it's not working. The result is a cherry on top. And that's what I want to emphasize. And I made other videos on this, but I really want to emphasize this because a lot of people said those targets are like, but I did everything right and I set the targets. Like, what kind of targets did you set though? So those are the four. Let's recap. First is creativity. Number two, what if you couldn't fail? Asking yourself that question, owning that, really opening up to what would that look like? And this is so much easier doing after the first step, the creativity, because you're already open. Your soul is already heard your mind is creating space for your soul for your heart to be heard number three is strengthening your core strengthening that you know nutrition health what does that look like for you maybe exercise maybe food maybe consciously consuming your food whatever that is also mental health right emotional health number four creating very clear targets for the next six months it's like i want to say the sun is in full bloom <laughs> The sun is at its peak. From this place of strength, of power, of abundance, of shining fully, what are your targets? Another thing I want to bring in here before we close is that we set those targets from a place of lack. And that's not a time to set your targets. When you're looking at your life and something that's so, so wrong and say, oh, I don't want this, I want that instead. Yes, you're getting really clear and like you're using that contrast to get clear on what you do want, but looking for solutions, how to get to that, it's not the place to do it when you're at lack because you're already closed off. The frequency of the problem and the solution are completely different. So set that target of, okay, I'm experiencing this, I hate this. Let's say I feel alone, I feel lonely, I... I want a relationship. I want someone to share my life with. Or maybe I'm feeling financial lack. I want to feel good and secure and like my needs are met. But the action steps, those targets, are to be set when you fully tune into the vision. Not when you're tuned into the lack. It's when you tuned into the vision. All right? 
or else we're like, okay, I have to, have to, have to, and I have to take those action steps. And you will see that those action steps will either lead to burnout or they will just, uh, they will contribute to you digging your hole deeper. Even though it would seem like, well, no, those are solutions and they don't actually solve anything. Come to those targets from a place of fulfillment, from abundance, from fullness, the fullness of the sun. Which one of the four spoke to you the most? Which one are you, well, I recommend doing all of them, but which one do you may want to hone in on or really focus on? And a special invitation every year. It's different, but every year it's here. We are doing a solstice ceremony, a solstice ritual that will, is also really practical because it enables you to dive deep and shine light on where is it that, that second question. If I knew I couldn't fail, like where is it that you're holding back? And uh, this is for a smaller intimate group because I want to focus on the individual energies of the people, those attending their live. You're also welcome to watch the replay if you want to and just send in your question. Um, but really what we're doing here is allowing ourselves to open up fully, to connect fully to your soul's calling, to discover that which is in alignment for you right now, all right, and not hold back anymore and move forward in your life because, I mean, look at what's going on everywhere in the world. We need that rising phoenix right now. We need this perfection of expression, of imperfect expression, I'm speaking right now about the logo of the powerful self that is the Zen circle, that is the perfect imperfection. Just do it. It basically stands for just do it. Just start doing, just start drawing a circle. And the rising of the phoenix, the burning away of the old and rising again with the new, a complete new rebirth. This is the time for that. The fire element is in like full power right now. So are you accepting the invitation to make the most of these energies? I thank you for being here. Again, let me know what landed below and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.